today we are going to take this bike out on the road. We're going to test the range, we're going to test acceleration. I wouldn't say this is so much a test ride for me as I've ridden this bike quite a bit, but we'll definitely take it out, we'll see what it can do, and give you guys a good idea of how this bike performs. So we're going to take this bike over to a hotel that has an EV charger. So we'll put this thing up on the charger, we'll charge it up a little bit, then we'll do some riding around town as well. I don't think the range of this bike is gonna be huge. This is only a four kilowatt hour battery pack. So you can figure maybe 40 miles or so of range. But let's get this thing out on the road and then we'll see what it can do. All right, here we are riding the electric KLX 250. This bike is a whole lot of fun. Uh, you get a lot of torque, you get a lot of pickup, especially at the mid range that I found. I've ridden this bike a bunch of times already. This isn't exactly a test ride at this point. I've made a lot of adjustments to the controller. Performs well, as far as I can tell. But uh, the biggest downside is the programming. It is, it's either buggy or the versions that they have don't allow you to make changes in certain settings. I, I got rid of most of the field weakening at the higher speeds, so the top speed here is without field weakening, but I do get a lot of pickup at that mid-range. I wasn't able to tune the controller to get a whole lot of acceleration straight out of the gate. So, so the acceleration from a zero stop is uh, its pretty modest, I gotta say. It's not exactly ripping off the starting line, but the top speed is also really good, as you'll see. So let's go this way. So that was full throttle acceleration going about 60 miles an hour now. At 60 miles an hour this bike is really great. It handles really well. The supermoto tires are really smooth. I wasn't able to set up the regen on this controller. That's another one of the downsides. Definitely some sort of bug in the Far Driver app. There's a spot where you set the regen current and it just doesn't change. I think I actually do have regen set up but the regen current is about two amps so you barely feel it and you can actually see it if you look at the Far Driver app as you're riding you can see that right now when I slow down I'm pulling about negative 24 watts so there is a very small amount of regen on this bike but not enough to make a difference certainly don't feel it and this controller doesn't support variable regen which kind of sucks it'd be nice to have a second thumb throttle so that way i could use regen for active braking but i can't get either to work i'm gonna try to set that up using the far driver pc application so hopefully I'll have more luck with that. I just haven't got around to it. So the other thing I have set up on this bike is cruise control. And that's on this switch over here. That used to be the start switch for the bike and I replaced it. It used to be a push button switch and I replaced it with a switch that uh, stays, two position switch. So then whatever the throttle position is, if I hit the switch, the controller will maintain that speed. So then I can just ride hands free at that speed. So then if I use the brakes, the bike will slow down, but then if the switch is still engaged and I let go of the brakes, it will re-engage cruise control at that lower speed. So right now I just have it set up at 40 miles an hour. But then if I turn the switch off, cruise control will stay activated until I actually use the brakes. And that's when it actually deactivates. So there's a decent amount of traffic. Uh, I'd like to do a top speed run. Here, let's get in front of all these people. And we'll open it up. All 
much. So that's full throttle acceleration right there. Again, at the mid-range, it's really good. Let's take it up to full speed on this part. So right now I'm doing about 80, about 82, 81, 82. something like that so 80 miles an hour give or take is the top speed which is very usable pretty happy with that so that was another full throttle uh, launch off the line And we got up to 70 miles an hour there, I don't know, pretty quickly. I don't know what that was. Coming up here, we'll take it on the actual interstate. So here we are on the highway, more than enough speed and power to keep up with traffic. see where we are in terms of the individual cell voltages. So we're at 3.6, 3.7 volts per cell. And that's kind of back to nominal. We started out at full charge, by the way. So we went from 4.2 to about 3.7 in, well, I don't know how many miles. Something like 20 miles. 25 miles that uh, that I just rode. All right, we are almost at our destination here. And hopefully the EV charger is not occupied. All right, and here we are. And with a bike, you don't need to actually pay for parking. And here is our charger. charging fault well that sucks but actually the chart I don't think it's the bike I think it's the actual charger well hopefully could make it back. The 
so that didn't work out i'm not sure why but i don't know if it's the charger itself all right here is that charger on a different day and as you can see it is working right now it's charging somebody's tesla over here and I suspect that it wasn't broken the day I was here. I think it was an issue on my end somewhere because the light that was on was this charging fault light. I guess it was something, if it was an issue with the, this power supply essentially, then I guess this power fault light would come on, but it was the charging fault. It's all your fault. However, the bike doesn't have any issues charging when it's at the house using the charger that I have. So I'm not quite sure what the issue was. Maybe there's legitimately some type of ground issue that this looks for, or maybe something else. So I'm actually not quite sure. So if you guys know, definitely leave a comment. So it's a 15 mile ride back and we are at about 3.7 volts per cell. And we can take this down to even as much as three volts per cell should be fine so like I said I'm gonna ride a little bit more conservatively and hopefully we'll make it back all right traffic that's good news for range at 30 miles an hour I'm pretty sure I can get quite a bit of range out of this bike Uh, let's take a look at the BMS and we'll see where we are in terms of the cell voltages. So currently 3.5 volts per cell, 3.5, 3.4, not bad, not great though. And there's a whole bunch of traffic here. So we'll get to the front of that. Hopefully no cops in this line of traffic because this bike is not exactly registered. I didn't exactly pass inspection on my electric conversion, not that I attempted it. Uh, and for that matter, I think this bike could be made fully legal. Uh, basically pass inspection. I might try. Uh, I'll make a video about that. And I don't know how that works. This bike obviously has a title uh, as a petrol bike. So I don't even know how that works. Do you have to apply for a new title as an electric bike? Because the title does say gasoline on it for the type of fuel. Or can I just take it to a inspection station and hope they don't notice? I do have all of the legal uh, things, I think. So it does have turn signals, it has a horn, everything is working. Uh, the one thing about getting a bike registered is the insurance. I mean, it's not like I'm riding this thing every single day for commuting or it's... And that's really the reason why this bike isn't registered is uh, because I don't ride it enough to justify paying insurance on it. Let's see, where are we? We're about 2.6 kilowatt hours of capacity that we've used so far. 30 amp hours. So that would be three quarters of the battery capacity, give or take.
and we're almost back so pretty much 100% chance that we'll make, make it back so the range is going to be at least 40 miles or 50 miles whatever that was that we just rode all right so now we are back at the house with the enduro e-bike and i just want to see if it will charge i don't know what that issue was at that charger here's my charger it's just running off of uh 110 volts all right and it sounds like we are charging Come back here. For some reason we're only at 2.6 amps. All right, so now after a little bit of time charging, we're back at 10 amps or 1.2 kilowatts that this charger is capable of. So I guess when the battery pack is pretty low in voltage, the charger limits the charging current. So that trip was around 30 miles. That's how far we rode. And the shunt meter is showing that we use 3.3 kilowatt hours. Of capacity so that means we're at about 110 watts per mile on this bike that's the efficiency which is pretty good pretty decent um, but uh, I'd say maybe the range is about 35 40 miles which isn't very far but usable to get around town more or less so what I think I'm gonna do next is put a battery pack back here there's quite a bit of room back there, and they could fit at least another four kilowatt hours here. And uh, just for riding around town, that would be perfect, so. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I've got a lot of great videos coming down the pike, including some awesome builds, as well as videos to address the common technical questions that you guys have in the comments. And if you're thinking about building your own e-bike, electric motorcycle, or battery pack, I'm now offering one-on-one -on -one sessions where I would answer any questions that you may have and give you all the information needed to help you avoid mistakes and get started on your build. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please check out the link in the description below.